I had some bad experiences. Um, I tend to be someone who trusts, who immediately says people are good. I've gone and taken advantage on that. Sitting down, I'm telling about my project, and he tells me, looks me in the eyes, and he says, Nathan, do not trust anyone. And I say, what do you mean? Don't trust the lawyer, don't trust the realtor, don't trust the engineer. And I'm thinking, what are you talking about? You want to invest in real estate abroad in beautiful places around the world? Well, that's what I've done over the years. Tons of experience. I have a beautiful house in Grindelwald. Crazy views. Renovated that. Bought property. I went into Montenegro. Looked at land. Did tons of videos. Bought property. Had some projects there. Building a house in Sardinia. Flipped houses in many places. Miami, south of France. A house in Switzerland. Flipped some land in Costa Rica. So there are lots over the years. Um, if I were to rethink some of these investments and reprioritize, what would I do differently? And there's tons and tons of very critical learnings here and can save you so much wasted time or potentially money. Uh, so I'm gonna jump at them quickly. You know, the first one is, and it's a bit sad, I wanna say don't trust anyone, but I had some bad experiences. Um, I tend to be someone who trusts, who immediately says people are good. And I've got taken that I've gone and taken advantage on that, and particularly on a project in Greece. And I remember very well um, meeting with a hotel owner who had been a businessman. We sat down, great guy, who traveled around the world. One day, just nerdy had a heart attack, and senior executive, and just said, "You know what? I'm done. I am. Um, I need to do something else." And he decided to buy, renovate a hotel based on wellness, yoga, natural, ancient Greek cooking. And the guy is sitting down, I'm telling about my project, and he tells me, looks me in the eyes, and he says, Nathan, do not trust anyone. And I say, what do you mean? Don't trust the lawyer, don't trust the realtor, don't trust the engineer. And I'm thinking, what are you talking about? I have an engineer that's certified that this project is buildable. I have a realtor who that's his job to do. I have a lawyer, etc. And he said, no, not in Greece. And you know what? The guy was right. So be careful. You need second, third opinion. Go, cross. Don't believe. Don't. I had papers. Whoops, nerdy fell. Snow here. I had papers showing that everything was fine and it wasn't. So I'm just telling you, like, trust or depending on where you are. If you're in a country that's a bit shady, that's why I've always tried. And it's funny. I had better experience in Costa Rica with legal system in Montenegro than in Greece. So it's not because it's part of the EU that you're in a situation and the amount of people getting scammed all over the place. So be careful of the scams, be careful of the legal system, be careful, just do your homework, talk to people, ask around. And I remember I had this, I was in this jewelry store with a necklace from my wife and the owner and I'm telling, oh, I'm gonna buy here. And the guy looks at me and says, be careful. Where are you gonna buy? And I'm like, oh, it's fine. I have the paperwork. It's, you know, 6,000 square meters, la, la, la. And the guy looks again at me and says, be careful. And that should have been the, just, Listen to the signs. And um, and that would be the next lesson. And I, I've talked about it in one of my other videos about the mistakes, but if your gut feeling is saying it's too good to be true, or not even it's too good to be true, there's a few red flags below. You know, that store owner telling me, be careful. Like there were some signs and I was just back to the first thing. So in love with the concept, the idea, this is an amazing deal, due diligence. And it's money. And about, you know, <laughs> You can look at it many ways. Like, uh, you know, entrepreneurs, they sometimes make a lot of money, sometimes they lose, and everybody says not all investments go well. And so I kind of view that as, you know, if I have 10, 20 projects and one of them I get screwed on, well, c'est la vie. But it hurts anyways. It sucks anyways. Nobody wants to. But man, I didn't realize, like, that you could have that type of yeah of just people who and it's interesting thing you know the realtor well he changed <laughs> two times agencies and it wasn't like he was working on his own it was freaking remax and then it was keller williams yeah he was working with big firms what happened is he just worked with big firms sold stuff saying it was fine and then moved to the next firm because all the clients were complaining insane never saw anything like that oh by the way and he had a lawyer and a lawyer in it trying to make you sign a power of attorney where the guys then behind you go your back go and do and change contracts and stuff i've never seen anything like that so yeah, I could do a whole video on, uh, on, on investing in Greece. So, um, so anyways, uh, lots of lessons over the years. Um, and it, another key one is if, um, if you're reading it for the money, 
<laughs> I like me. I was in it for the money, but a lot of passion, a lot of heart. So I believe that like life is that's what life's about. But let's just say Sedona. I understood Sedona. I bought one. I saw another property. But I'm like, why am I going to buy another property in Sedona? Because I'm going there. I already have a property. I don't need two. But I would have got scale. I would have had the same cleaning company. Because once you find, that's so complicated to do. It's easier to buy multiple units in one building, in one area, because you get synergies than going and buying in many places. It's very hard. And in fact, some of the issues we had was exactly that. Because I'm not an expert in Greece. Going to a new location and trying to invest there, I, I do understand you know, the U.S. market, know the rules. So be careful. If you are like me and want to follow my project and have tons of places around, just be careful. You're increasing your risk and potentially you won't make as much of a return. But for me, it was never about the return. I want to go and spend four months in Sardinia and be like, oh, this place is beautiful. And then arrive in Sedona in the canyons and feel the happiest man on earth. And then go to my chalet in Switzerland. That was always the dream. I worked crazy hours in the corporate world. I worked my butt off so i was like but i want to get the fruits from that i want to be able to have and i'm one place is i'm not just gonna go there and sit one place i want the diversity and you know in one of my first videos about a long video i did in sardina talking about this concept of having properties but also creating a community of people who are ethically correct who are good people and we share the properties so in fact where i'm a bit i don't gonna say stupid or dumb but I didn't need to buy all these properties because I could have done home exchanges on the site, home exchange. I could use other people's, they use mine, or really spend time and create this community of like-minded people who have beautiful properties. And we, once, I don't need 50, just a small group, someone who has something in Hawaii, wow, someone in Australia, someone in play, beautiful places. We create this community, so it's not like open. And so you're not afraid in your homes that someone's going to come and destroy. And we take care of each other's properties and we share our experiences. I mean, that's probably a much better way to uh, to do that. So um, the next thing is I'll just say, be careful of not falling in love too fast with a place or an idea without really looking at you know the data. If your goal is not just to find a beautiful place, but actually to have a good return on your investments, right? And what am I saying is every so often I get so carried away about a place that I have a bias towards, you know, wanting to buy there. And that's where having that objective heart versus rational uh, return on emotions and passion versus just financials is so important. You got to get your data. And a few things I've realized is if you're doing for short term rental, a long rental season makes a huge difference. And the places where I've invested and the rental season is very short, mostly the summer, it just means the risks are higher. Potentially the competition is, there's more competition. So I've done it like Montenegro just because the prices were crazy low. So Montenegro made sense because I knew worst case scenario, I'd flip the property, I'll flip the land, right? Building costs were low. So I looked at it less of a rental return than a capital return, right? But I would say that's kind of one of the things of falling in love with an idea of a place. And the point I would give of falling in love versus the rationality is Sardinia. Now Sardinia is stunning and beautiful. Realistically, buying, buying land and building, being remote is risky. So a lesson would be, be careful if you want to build and be careful you're not on site and don't yeah, have an independent contractor, have, have a whole support like to be able to make sure you can get this done. And if you watch my videos, you'll see kind of the yo-yo we've been through, the delays we had with the builder, uh, pretty crazy, uh, crazy story and continuing. So. Um, that would be a, a key lesson. Number three, which is linked to that is, and also it will be linked to Sardinia. Even I love Sardinia, so I don't regret Sardinia, but if I had spent a little bit more time researching and finding a house, maybe a smaller house, rather than trying to build, and today I'm seeing things, if you're interested, wow, in Sardinia, there's some crazy, crazy, I'm talking low price, beautiful views, not right on the water, but really with olive trees. Financially, I realized I jumped a bit too fast on that project, right? So, um, so even if I'm in love with a place, when you go too fast and you just 
you know, wanna you know go and get and, and and you and you grab quite quickly something that pops up versus really taking the time. I took the time in Sedona. I took a year here before I decided to get the house, and I knew this was that was a great deal. And in Sardinia, I went a bit too fast. So there's a risk of kind of falling in love combined with going too fast. So yeah, and and and, and the final one here is just you know if you can get a loan versus put your own money, you'll get more leverage. Money is the best leverage. Uh, so if you can get a loan to go, and that's why between building and buying done, having now taken a step back and seeing how complicated it is to build, probably I would take a loan and bought, you know, but often I just didn't have the money to build, to buy complete because I couldn't get the loan in these countries and maybe do a few more in a specific location. So those are some of the lessons, some of the questions I get. So a bit of a different video, but trying to answer the questions that you're sending me. I hope you liked it. Uh, Again, please click the like button, subscribe. Uh, it means a lot to me. It tells me that it's worthwhile doing these videos. And uh, well, I'll see you in a future video. Thank you.